Okay, we'll pray. Lord, thank you for this day and this time that we can gather in your name. Thank you that uh, you give us your word that can guide us and help us and uh, teach us more about you and uh, who you are and how you look at things and then guide us into the best way for our lives. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So, Ezra chapter 5, we'll start with verse 1. Ezra chapter Then the prophets Haggai and the, the prophet and Zechariah, the son of Edo, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God of Israel, even unto them. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, uh, the and, jo, and Joshua, the son of Zobak and uh, began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. At the same time came to, came to them uh, Tatina, uh, governor on, the side, on this side of the river, and uh, Shepharbozina, uh, and their companions, and said thus unto them, Who has commanded you to build this house and to make up this wall? Then said we un unto them after this manner, What are the names of the men that make this building? But the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews, that they... Uh, could not cause them to cease till the matter came to Darius. And then they returned answer by a letter concerning this matter. Okay, we saw in a chapter before that a letter was written to who was the king of that area at the time, which was our taxes. And so he was the king at that time, and a letter was written to him complaining on, on the fact that the Jews were rebuilding the house of God and that they, if they did so, then they wouldn't give money to him anymore. 
and so he caused all the building to cease. Well, he's since no longer king, and now Darius is king, and so they and so now you have a new king, and so the prophets uh, prophesied. God told through, told the people through the prophets that they were to start building again. So it, the thing when I was when I was reading this, so you have to ask the question. It was like, well, should they have stopped in the first place? Should they have kept building? Should they? There's always a lot of questions with all, with a lot of this kind of stuff, and it's like, well, what you know? In, in our own lives, we have some of the same questions. What should I do? What should I? Because sometimes there's multiple things you can do. Well, oftentimes there's multiple things and ways you can look at things. And it's amazing how as 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 humans and as uh, children of God, we can look at the same situation in many different ways and come to biblical conclusions in either way, in many different ways. So then, what do we do? How do we decide all of this? So we'll go to James chapter one. James chapter 1, we'll start with verse 2. <coughs> My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giving to all men liberally and unabraided not, it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven by the driven with the wind and tossed. For now, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We have in James it, it uh, telling us that temptations and trials and stuff are going to come. Well, they had a trial as the world around them didn't want them to build that temple, didn't want them to, to build the temple, and wanted them to stop. So wrote a letter, wrote a letter to the king, and the king looked back at his records and said, "Yes, they had caused trouble in the past, so I want them to stop doing this." And so the world's never going to agree with everything, but we come to these situations and we just don't have the proper wisdom on how to look at things. Uh, we look, we, we look at different things. Like you got two different ways oftentimes to go someplace. If you were trying to go to Spokane, there are several different ways you can go. Well, you would think that going the fastest way would be the best way. But what if he didn't know there was going to be a herd of cattle they got out and was going to be sitting on the road for hours on end before they could finally move them out of the way? Well, you don't know that, but God does. Or what if you go another way that's longer and the road washes out? It doesn't be days before anybody gets through. You just have no clue what's going to happen. Well, the same when you're talking to people and how you deal with things. And there's a lot of, of questions. We have a lot of questions. We don't know the best way to do things and the best way to go. So we have to have wisdom. Well, wisdom only comes from God, and God says, ask for it. Ask for wisdom in everything. Uh, we'll go to chapter 3, James chapter 3. Start with verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out a good conversation, his works with meekness and of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthy, sensual, devilish. 
For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The fruit of the righteous is sown in peace of of them that make peace. So we have a description of wisdom, that it's that wisdom that comes from God is peaceable. It it tends to try to make to make peace, try to be peaceable with, with people around you. Of course you know if you have if you're in if you're using the way the wisdom of God the way God would have it, it's not going to bring peace because as it said, the wisdom of the world wants anything but peace. They may cry peace, but they don't really want peace. So, and so uh, you have that. So you have that one. Uh, you have that kind of thing. Well, when you're talking to unbelievers, you can get that same sort of thing where you have to have wisdom on what would best reach them. And we're not always going to know exactly what to do. But but we have to to ask God. Ask God for wisdom for when for when you're talking to people. Because everybody takes different types of approaches. We, some of us have seen what like Mark Cahill or what Ray Comfort will go out and do. They talk to people off the streets and they use such love with them, but they're very direct because they only have a matter of minutes. And then the person will be gone forever. They're unlikely to ever see them again. And so they only have a short period of time, so they're very direct in their method. That they use, but yet when we're talking to people that we see all the time, sometimes that's what's required. But yet sometimes it's it's required in a different sort of way, where we have to, we have the time to get to know them. We can you know we can we can get to know them. We can show that we are good, hardworking people, and that we're loving and caring. We care about them and who they are, and so then. It, it's more easy for them to accept things that we say, or at least listen to them, even if they don't like it. Sometimes you'll have that, they're willing to listen to you because, and put up with you, where they might walk away from somebody like Mark Kittel and, uh, and Ray Comfort, they might walk away from them, but they're willing to at least listen to you, even if they don't agree with you, because they got to know you. So, but which one would be best? I don't know. That, that wisdom only comes from God. And so we try to keep peace with people, knowing that, of course, that's sometimes impossible. But, but we don't we leave that up to God, and we don't leave that for ourselves. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs 1 1. The proverb of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. A man of understanding shall obtain unto wise counsel to understand a proverb and interpretation. The word of the wise and their dark saying, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So we have, we have the wisdom that comes from God. It's all in God's word. And so the wisdom comes from God. We can pray to God. We can read his word. His word provides a lot of instruction on what we should do and how we should act. And then we can pray to God so that we can apply it correctly in our, in our lives. And so anything decision we come to needs to be consistent with God's word. It can't be some thought or... Christians can get into more trouble by going on their feelings first and then everything else afterwards. I've seen, and there's been a lot of, lot of, especially in our Western worlds that have shown that 
Feelings are good and God gives feelings. They're important. They're an important fact of life. God gave them for a reason. He has feelings too. But we have to base it upon something concrete. And the Word of God keeps everything settled, keeps us from you know, floating away with our feelings, and, and it keeps us grounded. So we'll go to Romans 12. Romans 12, we'll start with verse 16. <laughs> Be of the same mind, one towards another, not high-minded, but condescending to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit, recompense no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of, of all men. If it be possible, as much as lies in, in you, live peaceably with all men. So we're called to, to try to be peaceably, to try to live peaceably in this world. We know, as it says, if it's at all possible. You know, it's not always going to be possible. But we're not trying to live comfortably. We're not trying to live in a way in which the world's going to cause it, which is going to cause trouble. It's going to happen if you live for Christ. It's going to be a natural thing that is going to happen from time to time, and in some places worse than others. But and if at all possible, it, it, asks, it wants us to desire to live peaceably, but not to contradict his word in doing so. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Sometimes we can take things too far. First Corinthians nine sixteen. <laughs> is laid upon me, yea, woe uh, is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will a uh, dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, what, if my re what is my reward then? Verily, uh, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I uh, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under law, as under law that I might gain them that are under law. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law but to, uh, to God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I may gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. And we have a charge to give the gospel. We, whatever we do must, we, especially when we're dealing with people and souls, they have to come to repentance. They have to come to the gospel the way God says. It isn't a matter of sometimes we'll take the, the verses, you know, we're going to become all things to all people, and they can take it too far, where they're going to go live their lives as the world does, so that they can have a better witness. Well, the world doesn't like that witness. They know the difference. Um, then we look like hypocrites, and they don't come, if they do come to something, it's usually not the actual gospel, but 
Um, what others have talked to, they notice it's a false gospel. They come to a gospel where they're where they're sort of coming to Christ, but they're not coming to him to get rid of their sins because they don't believe they're sinners. They're like looking to him for a better life. So we've got to have the whole gospel. But that's it, it's, it's all or nothing. It's, it's the way it should be. But we do, we do when we're, when we're in the world, we do when we're talking to people and dealing with people, especially when we're around them all the time and everything like that, we need to be relatable to people the best we possibly can without violating this word. All of that must be absolutely forefront. And that, you know, it, that's where wisdom comes in, wisdom from God. We, we must have wisdom in all situations. And we're not going to see things the same way. We're not going to do things the same way because God uses things in different ways. And he's a transferring, he's trying to transform us to look more like his son. He's, we all have different gifts in the body and they're important. There's a reason why God brought everybody together because it makes a complete church. We don't have a complete church if we're missing different parts and pieces of the body. We're all very important and here for a reason, but we're all being transformed to look more like Christ and less like ourselves. Because we were born into this world, we're born into Adam, and we're supposed to be transformed to look more like Christ. So we'll go to Philippians 4. Verse 6, Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, or if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the peace of God shall be with you. So we have peace through Christ. We have peace through God because of what Christ did. We shouldn't be anxious or afraid of anything. We got to ask for God for 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 wisdom, and God will give us peace in our lives as we search and as we do the His work that He has. We live for Him. He will give us a natural peace in our life that is different. That the world doesn't see peace, but yet we have peace because it's not based upon here and now, but it's based upon something that will never change and that will never leave. And so. And then it gives a list of the things that we should, as Christians, be thinking about. These should be the forefront of our minds, and there are so many other things that shouldn't be there. We've seen a list of a list of different things that shouldn't be in our lives. These are things that should be going through our, our minds, and so we should be focusing our lives and minds on these things. And sometimes the world can draw us, especially if we watch too much news. Too much news can cause a lot of problems. Not that you shouldn't be aware of what's going on around you, keep your head in the sand, but too much of anything is, is usually bad, except for God and His Word. So then you can't get too much of. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. First uh, Thessalonians five sixteen. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 
God wants us to rejoice. Rejoice in, in every situation, good or bad. We have Christ. We have everything to rejoice for. He wants us to pray without ceasing. Make sure to keep in close contact with God. Keep in close contact and to be in prayer for everything, even the slightest thing that seems, which is difficult, because I have to say, that's certainly not my, my way I think about things. But it is something God wants us to pray about the little things, because although our own personalities might lead us to certain decisions and lead us to do things certain ways, He's not, God doesn't do things upon our personalities. He does things right. He wants things done correctly. And so we want to be led by God to do things right. Not that he won't use us and use our gifts that we have, of course, but sometimes the way we look at things isn't always correct. Even if we mean well, we can mean well and still look at things wrongly. Uh, John chapter 2. Verse 1. And the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was there and his disciples to the marriage. And when they uh, wanted wine, the mother said of, of Jesus, and mother and the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Uh, my hour is not come. His mother said unto the servant, Whatsoever he says, do it. So we know that this is going to go on. He's going to make water into wine and everything. And we know what the what the last phrase was. Uh, Whatever he says, do it. Well, that kind of is the kind of thing the servants had no idea what he was going to do at that beginning. And he, he did, uh, and he went, of course, turned water to wine, and it was the, the you know, the, the, the miracle that he did. But in our same lives, we also need to look at things the same way, that whatever Jesus says, that's what we do. We're not looking for our own our own things in our own, in our own ways, but we're looking to do things the way God would have us do them. And that's where keeping in close communication is also talking to one another, too. That's a very important part of our life, is to be in communication with other Christians in our lives. We're going to have communication. Jesus did want us to be out of the world. He wants us to be in the world to, so that we can win the world to him. But we have to stay in close communication with one another because very important part of life. If we don't have that, we can be easily led in the wrong direction. But we have we have his word, we can pray to God and he can give us wisdom. And then we just need to go out and live it. We just go out and do it. Whatever he says, we need to go do it and live that way. And it isn't going to be easy and we're going to miss many things. But praise God, today is a new day and uh, we can always wake up tomorrow and do things and do things uh, more the way God has. He's given us every day, and he's given us these days to, uh, to glorify him in his name. So we should be grateful and thankful for every day that he gives us. Uh, it is, we should be thankful for every day he gives, and every day we live, we're closer to being with him. So we should pray, so we can pray. Lord, Thank you for your word and the encouragement you give us. Please help us, Lord, to look to you wisdom, for wisdom. Help us to remember to always look to you. Guide us in the best way to go, Lord. We have, we're just starting this new week, and uh, there's a lot of things that will come on our path. Please give us the wisdom we need to do the work that you have. Help us to do things right and give us the grace to complete it. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Amen. Thank you,
a brown one, but I can't find a brown one. And if you don't like this one, you cut it off. 